Hey, good evening everyone. It is Monday 28th of July and a few things to cover, uh, a bit of a random collection in this T-log. Uh, one is that eternal question of whether testers should be learning to code or not. And I think the general conclusion is yes. I know we've uh, mentioned this before, but uh, Peter Wallen wrote a new blog, well, yesterday, in fact, uh, about the very same topic talking about uh, you know what what level of uh, knowledge should testers have about coding and you know one of the things that he touches on that really stood out for me was the idea that if we're to have a conversation with software development teams then we we need to understand what it is they're talking about and depending on the environment you may need to learn a little about the vocabulary the terms the structure of the languages and I guess that would apply to technologies you know maybe that's server technologies or database technologies that the team are using makes complete sense right nobody would, would expect you to have to be able to have a reasonable conversation with you know a database architect if you had no clue what they were talking about you didn't understand the terms the vocabulary um, you had no clue about SQL perhaps uh, how to run queries and you just had a conversation with them and went, wow, okay, you seem to know what you're talking about. I have no idea. And like I was, when we're talking to developers, we're often talking either uh, about the the code specifics, so we're doing code facing tests. Maybe we've got some kind of automation in place that looks at the APIs, or you know, it's something like Cucumber uh, that's using a bit of code in there. We might well be just sat at the UI level. Uh, you know that's the argument about testing and checking but at some point you're going to end up in a conversation with people that are developing the application you know down in the guts they're, they're writing the code they're putting um, application components together and you know infrastructure components and you're gonna have to be able to have a good conversation with them I mean it's 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 kind of blazingly obvious um, but it goes on to talk about whether, you know, are testers fail developers? I mean, you know, it's a good topic for a blog post. The answer is no, right? And he says that uh, it's it's complete nonsense. Um, in fact, the more we go on, the more time testers are spending looking at code, practicing code, doing a bit of code. I was doing a bit of my own code stuff in the background here, this little text-based adventure game. You know, it's it's pretty ubiquitous uh, that we're going to be playing with code these days. Um, so, yes, go away and learn a bit of code and the tools that allow the delivery of code. So, a bit of noise outside. Go and have a look at uh, the uh, blog post from Pete here. And I'll put a link in the description. And have a think about your own reasons for learning code and to what level you want to learn them to. Now, obviously, one of my favorite uh, languages is Ruby. Always trying to play uh, a bit more with Ruby. Difficult uh, in that I'm, you know, I don't often get offered roles that are hands on automation. That's the problem that comes with experience. You tend to get more senior roles and they tend to be more hands off, but that's fine. I can play at home. Um, Pat Maddox on his blog here has essentially offered up, let's see, a Ruby Steps, a daily coding practice, and there's something similar, I'm sure, for other languages, but what I wanted to show you here was a way for testers to get involved in software, te in development of code. Now, as you saw, you know, I'm playing with code, I have that uh, Olydium text-based adventure game that I've written in VB script, uh, I've written mostly in JavaScript and Ruby. And it's it's a way for me to practice out the language. It includes, you know, variables, methods, classes, etc. And all the other good stuff that you'd expect. Reading and writing to files is something I was looking at there uh, using X XML files. Um, and what uh, what Pat has offered here is that if you sign up, there will be these interactive lessons following you know, various things. Now, okay, you maybe you're not interested in Ruby and Rails and so on, but certainly TDD and OOP, you know, certainly refactoring, are things that we're going to encounter 
uh, with our development teams, certainly in the more idealistic teams, we're going to have to get in there and have those conversations with them, understand what these mean in terms of our schedules and test delivery. So what I'd recommend if you fancy looking at a bit of Ruby, go and uh, hit Pat's site, and if not, look for something like this, right? Look for something that's that's very similar. Now, that's, uh, that's a little bit of Cody stuff. Um, on the blog, I've just actually issued uh, or published the next um, blog post here. This is uh, Ruby Basics, and I'm just looking at the, the sort of the real, um, you know, the basic elements of Ruby, so that we can then go and start to put something interesting together and you know arrays are one of them. I did a a, a look at how we create basic arrays, but then this is how we put data on and remove it. Now. One of the posts that I wrote today was about age discrimination in the workplace. And there was on LinkedIn, and I've looked, and of course, as is the way, I can't find the damn link now. But there was a, uh, you know, a, a post that had, it was like three and a half thousand replies about, about people who are 50 plus looking for work and what the attitude of certainly the IT industry, because that's uh, who I'm linked in with, you know, what the attitude of the IT industry is to people of 50 plus. And I went onto the Office of National Statistics website today to look at some statistics for, you know, what the age group split is. And it's quite telling that the majority of people, guess what, are in work from about 30 to 50. And once you get above 50, then the numbers in employment generally start to drop. But the picture is even different, or is different, for women. And that's a topic I'm going to come on to very soon once I've got my thoughts together on it. Age discrimination and inequality in the workplace for women are two big hot topics I think that we need to be talking about. However, in this post I say that age discrimination, in my view, isn't as big an issue as perhaps it's painted out to be in our industry at least in my experience at least i'm sure there are sectors of you know, various countries industry sectors um, places around the country where age discrimination is a significant issue but i only know from my general view my general perspective that i don't believe it to be a massive issue not that it isn't a, a real factor. And I, I paint out in here you know, some of my views on this. And part of my view is that there are, as I've already said, um, about me not getting offered you know, agilistic Ruby on Rails developer roles. There are points in your career when a given role suits you more and an employer will look at you for that role. And that's a kind of, is that positive discrimination? I'm not sure, again, this is not my field of expertise. I'm talking as an employee, as an employee and an employer, what have I seen? So again, in the blog post, I say, there aren't many senior program managers running you know, multi-million pound um, programs of automation to save you know, masses of, uh, of cash uh, and improve the business that are 22, 25 years old. But there are, you know, 50 year olds, 45 year olds, 55 year olds doing those roles. Conversely, there aren't many cucumber, aspect, selenium using 55 year olds. Because at that point in the career, generally people have moved past specific roles that require specific technical knowledge that can be acquired within a very limited time time frame not mastered it in a limited time frame but acquired that is why in some ways you do see 20 year olds 30 year olds in very senior positions because they've had a they've spent their time focusing on some very specific skills that allow them to do those roles so there's not a sense of exclusivity here that I'm trying to say. Only 50-year-olds can be execs. Only 20-year-olds can code. That's complete nonsense. 
I'm saying that generally that's what you'll find. And so it's up to you as an individual, it's up to me to say, hey, you know, at 42 years old, what roles am I likely to get in the marketplace, given my experience, my skills, my education, my training, you know, this kind of stuff that I do now, the people that I know now, and I need to go for those roles. You know, this is this is me as an industry. I need to reach out to, to the customers that want my products and my services. And likewise, that's what you know the youngsters are going to do, right? And of course, youngsters will want to be the senior executive. But career-wise, experience-wise, education-wise, training-wise, they're just not there yet. Except, as I've said, where people have very specifically focused to get those roles. And to do that, they obviously say, therefore, I'm not going to be this agilistic coder. I'm not going to be a project manager. I'm going to go down this path. And when people ask me about you know, career paths, one of the things is that if you become a deep specialist in a specific area, then you can advance very quickly. But your sort of sideways movement in the career is going to be limited, right? Where well, you can be a generalist, but your overall progress might be limited. And to me, I think a lot of the problem in our industry, if 50 plus year olds are experiencing a problem, is that at that point, they simply don't possess the skills and the experience to move ahead. That won't be exclusive, but it will be a large part of the problem. In my own career, you know, I want to land a project that is Ruby, Cucumber, RSpec, um, daily stand-ups, continuous integration, and I want to experience for probably 12 to 18 months a you know a hardcore agilistic development team so somebody come along and give me the opportunity to work on uh, you know work with that in uh, you know some some like I say ruby based automation but given the experience that I've got given the, the day rate that I demand that probably isn't going to happen and what I will probably need to do is continue to develop those skills in the background maybe get lucky and, and acquire the opportunity on certain projects so that maybe <laughs> at 45 years old or am I getting closer to 50 I can step back and say hey halve my day rate um, you know use me for three days uh, allow me to take a junior role take a risk probably and that will come as a surprise to people now maybe I will be 50 plus then saying why is no one giving me an opportunity here what is happening would I give me the opportunity? I'd be very cautious. I think our industry is pretty open to it. I've hired testers that are 50 plus because I know that they're stable, because I know they're experienced. Partly as well, I know they're not massively aggressive about the career and they probably will stay in the roles and fulfill them really well. You know, you don't need to be looking over the shoulder. You don't need to be worrying about the Friday and Monday nights or <laughs> days, I guess, whether they're going to be in or not. But then if I need an aggressive, fast learner of new technology, I'm probably going to be more biased to bring in the 22 to 25 year olds who, being so close to current education, are practiced in learning stuff quickly and you know, are like sponges completely open to it. So I think this whole idea of, is there, is there employment discrimination? Of course, this is not the perfect world. Is it rampant in our industry, uh, in our specific sector? I don't think so. Not from what I've seen in the UK at least. Maybe your experience is different and I'd love to hear it. What I put at the bottom here though, that I do think is a problem, is workplace and pay inequality for women. I think we've still got a massive problem with that, a massive problem. And I, I find it completely abhorrent that this still continues and so in a follow-up post once I've got my points together I will put that in there that's the way I will you know, put those things together and post that out one of the things that I didn't put in here but I guess I've been touching on is the age problem is I think mostly about 
your generic experience, you're overqualified, right? And you go in with an expectation, you're going with an air of what um, entitlement. You know, I'm a senior guy, I'm a mature guy, I've got tons of experience, therefore I should be getting these roles. When in actual fact, somebody like me with my experience, etc., isn't needed. They need someone less, shall we say? But part of getting around that is to say, hey, have you checked my blog on, you know, all about Ruby? Have you checked my videos on Aspect and Cucumber? You know, have you seen the work I've done in agile environments? All of that heavyweight uh, investment bank work is just one aspect of me. Here is the other stuff. Give me an opportunity. And that means continuing to educate myself. So that means signing up for things like Ruby Steps, right? And diligently working through these on a day to day basis, even though I'm 42 years old. Why would I not, though, right? Why would I not? Pull out my VB script book and the not very well read right now programming in Lua book. You have to do it. You have to keep reinventing yourself and moving yourself ahead. On that note, self progression can be difficult. And in a very timely post, Simon says, Shrivner, I think his name is, posts something here about just starting. And Read the post. You know, it's about, we can do a lot of talking, we can, uh, you know, pontificate about, oh, I'm going to do, I'm going to do, and many people are going to do, going to do, and they never do anything. Well, just start. Start something. Start blogging. Start making a video. Start studying. Start signing up for, you know, Ruby Steps or something similar. Just start. Start installing the software. Start talking to people. Start going to the community events and just start. I firmly believe. I firmly believe, and I'll come back in eight years and see what happens here, that I will be sat happily writing Ruby, Cucumber, RSpec, or the equivalent tools at that point, uh, automation, the employee will be happy, hopefully I'm back in my adopted Spain, and you know I will be 50 years old, and it, but it will be fine, because my attitude, my outlook, my perspective is... I've just left university, I'm still a youngster, I've got to get on with this, right? But I've got masses of experience in the background. But I'm not going to do that unless I just start, unless I just get going with it. So, as you know, somewhere down here, obviously I know a bit of Ruby, I'm hacking away here, putting various bits together, and this works moderately well, there are some defects. But I don't know everything, so that's why on the YouTube videos, I'm going back through the basics to, to reschool myself and make sure I've got it absolutely nailed. And I will be signing up for Ruby Steps so that I can see what Rails is about and a bit more about TDP, uh, the TDD, etc. So, start something. And Rosie Sherry actually published something of a very similar nature, which is about being a leader. Video is quite good actually. It's all about you know, people want to see change, you know, be the change you want to see in the world kind of attitude, uh, but they don't want to get off the backsides and actually be the change. They never want to, you know, they, they, they want you know, the agile team role. They want somebody to employ them, even though they're 50 plus. They want, they want, well, go and do something about that actively. Make it happen. Make that change uh, that you want to see happen. Um, and he says, you know, I am willing, I am willing, I am willing to feel stupid, feel uncomfortable, um, <laughs> feel embarrassed that I don't know what I'm doing and the 22 year old does. Who cares? You've just got to get on with it, right? So that's my little rant for today, I think. Um, coming from you know the idea of age discrimination and my views on why age discrimination certainly exists, but why it might exist in your own world and possibly the need for you to get off your backside and do something about it. On a lighter note, Test Management Forum on Wednesday the 30th. So this is the next thing that uh, if you're in London you need to go and have a look at. Uh, again, free. Remember the start time is midday so you will have to take the afternoon off on Wednesday so go uh, get it booked. And then 
follow Tony as he races from the event and goes to the uh, London Tester Gathering, uh, which I haven't opened the website here for, but I'll put a link. So, good day Wednesday if you want to get involved in the test community and you know maybe get over some of that age discrimination that you're feeling uh, and start to advance your career a little bit. As you can see here, I'm just researching it, in fact, about uh, equal pay debate for women. Um, so, London Tester Gathering on Wednesday, and then follow Tony Bruce, get to the Shooting Star just near Liverpool Street Station in London there, uh, and enjoy a few pints and a little chat with some more testers. All right, so be sure to have a read of the blog post and tell me what you think. Uh, I put a, a, a link on LinkedIn as well. And look out for the, the next blog post. Don't forget to hit YouTube and have a look at the latest videos I've put up there. Um, I'm aware that some of the quality of these videos is a bit off. Unfortunately, re-recording is not an option because I've lost the original Camrec files. So work with them just to open the templates. Uh, and have a look at the latest two Ruby uh, videos there as well. More stuff coming. Thanks for listening.